Well, the initial part here of, of getting this done, I usually use a utensil knife with a new blade just to cut off the worst, the first part of this. Getting it down to more or less the, the shape. That's good, good enough. Now it's later on we'll do the, the fine, fine shaping. We have done a vacuum of the bottom sandwich, the Vinicelle. And as you can see here, it's made out of a lot of small pieces, but it that works out quite well. It's no problem. Uh, it will absolutely be perfect. At the end, now, this is the time when we can do the final shape of the outline because then and, and cut it so now it's the time to measure this put up the, the the shape and really get the outline that i want the final outline so let's go ahead with that this is the tricky part as i for me is to get the center line right and in this case i'm just using a laser here to see if I have it at the, the right time. The problem is there is a curved board. So you have to, to, to check if you, if you get it right where you want it. And I just use this one as, you see, the important part for me here now is to have it 30 off, 30 centimeter off at the widest point. And then I just align this with the widest point and with the 30 off here and at the end here. This basic template, I made that one out of the Tomato 91, the Future Fly. Then I changed it a little bit. I have a little bit wider nose than the Tomato. And, and then I'm just using this as a basic template and, and as you see here, I'm not following that one. Uh, I've done now, based on my design, it's a little bit slightly different, but I still use that basic outline. So I get this one here, it's a little, so I secure the, the 30 off and the widest point here. So that's where I, where I go now with the back part here. if you have a good marker. I will now also take it into consideration and the width, the sandwich that goes on the top that will build another four millimeters, two millimeters on each side, plus then you have the, 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 the cloth, but that's not so much. I mean, the, the carbon and the, and the fiber. So that's, that's pretty, pretty okay. So now we do the same on this one, the line here, the outline. Time 
to shape it. This is done with a really coarse sandpaper, really heavy, long to get to secure that you get the line correct and use long sweeping moves. And then always verify, as you can see here, this is completely off balance, no close to 90 degrees. So this is, needs to be secured as well. Here we, we still have a lot to work with. And of course this will affect the raw cut that I made on this side. That's also the reason why I want to make this side first. And then I can adjust all the lines on the top part later on. But I want to get this one correct first so I get the correct outline. Uh, first of all. And the reason why I did the first cut, because when you do this one, it's always harder to get it correct, the correct edge and so on. So that's why I make it rough and then put, put the sandwich on and do the final one. And finalizing this side with a very nice, to get a smooth, so we finish in this edge before we continue. And before we start everything, we just need to weigh this block now with the, with the sandwich on. And it says 22.65. This means that the bottom shape, bottom part weighs 55. Because we had 2.1 before. So that's how I, we can continue to secure the volume of the board. Now, when the bottom is done, we need to, to re-measure also now the, the, the rail lines. And that's uh, because they have changed a little bit now with the final outcome. So that's what we're doing now. Perfect. Now measuring the thickness, we can see here that this one is a little bit too thick. This one is now 3.8 or 3.75. And it should be 9.49. Centimeters thick there, and this one is too thick. Uh, so this one is also nine point four, nine point uh, nine point six right now. So that means that we need to do. I need to take it down a little bit on the thickness overall. I think it's over here. It's almost thirteen now. So I need to take it down a little bit, but not too much. So I'm a little bit going for a 95 liter ball rather than the 92 that I have here on this. This is a 92 liter. I think I'll do it a little bit thicker in the nose, a little bit more volume. This will be a Bonnet 23 board. I will take this one with me together with the Tamado 91. And so I will have a, for hope, hopefully, for hopefully, for hopefully uh, uh, a little bit of a light wind board a little bit higher, more volume, a little bit wider, early planing, but not too big. Uh, a slide board. I don't want anyone to do double air coolers or anything like that, flat landing on this board. That's not the purpose of it. It's, it's a more of a beginner intermediate sliding, doing switch corners, but not too much flat landing. It's okay, it will hold for flat landing as well. But we'll see, we'll see where we come. Thank you. So I need to, to reduce the thickness in this part. Thank you. 
So now I've taken down the thickness of the board in the tail. I want to keep the tail pretty thick here in the tail to help help in the in the sliding moves. So what I'm doing here, I, I will take this rail line down from here down to here. If I make a mark here, so we can see more or less from here, and then I take it to the end here instead. This means that I will take off less here, and that means that I will have a little bit thicker tail. These are the ones, these are kind of design changes you do when you shape, when you, especially when you have a, when you shape it from a, from a blank. Of course, if you have a CNC machine, then you, you have everything done already in the program, and that will cut it out perfectly for you. But when you do the hand shaping from a pure block, you have a basic model that, that I showed you before from, from my shaping program. But then as you go along, it's, it's always that you, you find, oh, but I, perhaps I should change a little bit here and so on. And this is the fun part with this shaping. That's, that's really the, what, what happens if I do this? What happens if I do that? And that's really the, 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 the beauty of, 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 of this, in my opinion. So this is what I like about this. To get this really creative part of, of, of the shaping. And measurement, measurement, measurement. To secure that you have an even board on both sides. I'm getting there with the top rail line now. I think it feels it feels and looks pretty good. Uh, so I leave it at that, and then we'll start working on the on the second rail line. This is where where your where your feeling gets into the into the shaping. Does it feel good? Does it look good? Do you like the lines? Do you don't like do you don't like the lines? Does it look even? I'm using just a normal rod, it's a T40. Then we have the, 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 the bottom rail here that I will take in afterwards. And that way I will go one centimeter up and one centimeter in with the sharp rails here, going over to soft fronts, really taking it in to make it the soft, soft round front corner here. Front. The production board. So this is a one at 130 more or less. Yeah, I can take this one down a little bit more of the rail here. Uh, the 150 is there. Still has a have a little bit more to take down here on the rail. The 170, 163, 170. Yeah, I'm getting closer. 
Yeah, now it's time. I will do the way I do it is I, I do the rough, the first ray line on top, then I do my bottom ray line, and then I finalize the shape of the rays. Uh, so let's get going. Now with the bottom rail line cut, now it's time to blend, blend all this into one. So now it's just to continue and to ensure that you do this. Now you're hand shaping. You're not following any, any, any lines or measurements. Now it's all about the feeling, to get the feeling and, and that they look the same on both sides. You have the, with the rail lines, you get the, the rough part that after that it's 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 more of a feeling to to, to get the, the the shape that you want. But what I like with this one here, I'm this will be a pretty flat board here. Hopefully here I will have a little bit more of a dome here in the back end where I have the with the back foot. Where the front foot is pretty flat. So you will have a good doing the pop. So you're not standing with your on, on your heels going into the pop you want to be flat over the board going switch being flat over the board being able to push them with, with your toes so now and push getting the shape out of the rails using just a normal sandpaper going over like this and then finalizing with the screen paper with the screen going over this so if we're looking at the shape here now, so it's looking pretty nice. With a thick tail, about 41 wide in, in the 30 off. So I'm pretty happy with this shape now, actually. Does, you, you, it's easier than to take that, that little little ridge that, it, that there is there, you take that on the Eryx instead. The next step now is to line everything and put in some reinforcements for the, for the foot plugs, uh, foot strap plugs and also for where the mass track will be. Here I will put in a 10 millimeter divinucelle. As, as, a, as a block 
So then it will be a combination, when you put in the mass track, it will be a combination of carbon, divinucel or erex in this case, divinucel and then it will also attach to the core. So it will be not a complete block of divinucel, I don't really like, I, 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 I go with a one, one ten centimeters, oh one centimeters, ten millimeters block. I think that's that's enough for this for the pressures and, and the, the, the loads that you get on, on, on the board like this.